Content Nation, welcome to day 40. I'm Martina. Day 40 means we've got 30 days to go. Mm -hmm. So for those of, of you who are watching this video who are unfamiliar with this challenge, it's a 70 day challenge. And uh, the whole goal is to lose 30% of your fat mass, which uh, may, not mean, may not mean a whole lot to you, but that's a big chunk of your fat mass. The whole point of doing these videos and putting this out here is to really emphasize that you don't need to do extreme or take extreme measures in order to make good change with your body composition. Indeed. Especially if you are somebody who is moderately to uh, heavily overweight. Okay, so just remember that it just takes sustainable measures, consistent measures that uh, we apply over time, right? So That's exactly it. Uh, sustainable measures that we apply over time consistently, right? So, we'll all right. The first time. Um, okay, so listen, we're going to do something new that we have not been doing in the previous videos, and that is we're going to talk about a couple foods that we see in people's journals that we are going to address. And these may be problematic or not, but we want to just throw them out there. And we want to show you why these could be potentially problematic or not. Okay, so, and this could even just be the way that they're entered into the accounting software that we use, which is MyFitnessPal. First one we have here, somebody entered in turkey sandwich. Boom. <laughs> turkey sandwich. All right, is there a problem with that? Well, there is a huge, well, actually, there's a lot of problems with that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, there, Where does it come from? Yeah, there- What kind of bread? Yes. How I mean, much bread? Well, the only way this might be okay, the only way, well, this wouldn't be the only way, but this is one way that it might be okay, is if this person had created it yeah. and had custom entered everything in and then put it in as a recipe. Mm -hmm. So, so custom recipe, so yes. it's custom recipe. You know, but there is also yeah. some manufactured, you know, turkey sandwiches that could be done by somebody else. We talked about mm -hmm. how often the nutrition element is not really precise, but that could be another way, right? Let's say, I'm just making up this bakery that has this product that is pretty standard, um, that is manufactured in such a way that there's a nutrition, like all, everything is listed, you know, like two slices of sourdough, uh, <clears throat> this way, blah, blah, blah. And then the total is 400 calories and there's tomatoes on it and this is carbs and this is fat and this is protein. Yeah, I mean, th the reason why I pull this out particularly is I'd like to know where the entry came from. So the whole point of monitoring and entering in your macronutrients, which make up your calories, but most importantly, the type of macronutrient type of macronutrients that you have, so amounts, yeah. all of this matter is to know whether what you are putting in actually reflects what you're actually having. So yeah. this is important, okay? So <clears throat> yeah, I mean, we can't just go around throwing in, you know, well, I had breakfast or, you know, I had oatmeal and be like, this is, you know, about this much. In that case, we wouldn't consider that really quantifying. Yep. <laughs> it would be kind of guessing. So there's not, nothing wrong just for, you know, clarity. There's nothing wrong per se with having a turkey, a turkey sandwich. sandwich, I suppose. I mean, there are perhaps better foods, but for the all in all, for the sake of this challenge, we, we, we could accept that. The question well, is, what is do you mean? It, I think it's great. And you have two slices of sourdough, you have tomato, you have lettuce, you have onions, you have other vegetables. Yes. You've got, well, I know that you're not a huge fan it, of turkey um, deli meat, but there's some cleaner ones out there like turkey breast. Yeah. You know, if this person baked their own turkey breast, that would be great. You can put cheese. I mean, like what? Yeah. what is about the sandwich well, you it, don't think is okay? It, I would just question what goes into it. Okay. Okay. So what is it made of? Um, yeah, is it is it real meat? Is it processed meat? Is it, you know, um, you know, if there's cheese in there, what kind of cheese is it? Condiments. You know, um, the, you know, if, if there's condiments in there, what's going into yeah. what? What type of bread do you have? So, so, yeah. so it just really comes down to exactly what's going into the sandwich. So, uh, when somebody just enters in turkey sandwich. sandwich, what that tells me is they found an entry online, more than likely, although not necessarily because maybe they created this entry themselves, which is possible to do. But more than likely, they had a turkey sandwich, they found something online, they entered it in. And so there can be a drastic difference between what that person actually had and what that random entry that they picked out mm -hmm. represents. And, and this is where drastic the is the word. Yeah, drastic. exactly. <laughs> so, and then, you know, it doesn't match reality. Okay, mm -hmm. I think we kind of beat that one to death. I love it. <laughs> All right, uh, one chicken drumstick with skin. 
All right, is that problematic? I don't know. What kind of chicken? Well, it's a drumstick, okay, so we no, can- what kind? What do you mean? Well, you know, like where does the chicken comes from, uh, come from? Like, is yeah. it uh, a large chicken or a small chicken? How big is the bone? <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. How Absol fat is the chicken? Absolutely. Has what, it what, been riding around? Yeah, we don't know the- <laughs> Anything. We don't really know. Um, I mean, we know the type of meat, we know that it's drumstick, but we don't really know the amount, and this is the problem. So, uh, is this problematic? Yes. What would I suggest doing? Well, taking take the, meat take the meat off the bone and, and measure that out is really what what is required. So, you know, if you want to think about this more on a planning scale, let's say you do a bunch of... Uh, Chicken drumsticks. Yeah, you do a bunch of them. You just cook them. And then what you do is you, ahead of time, you just take off that meat and you put it into a container and you've got a bunch of turkey, uh, excuse me, chicken uh, drumstick meat uh, ready to go. Mm -hmm. So that's what you would do. Uh, yeah, this is too much of an estimation. There's too much level of error here. We don't really know how much meat is uh, represented is how much bone? yeah is this two ounces is this four ounces is it five ounces we don't really know so um so this is very problematic for <laughs> for me and I'm, I'm guessing the same for you right indeed okay yes all right last video we talked about five ways to better manage blood glucose and actually there's two more things that are in some ways a little bit indirect <clears throat> or are sort of nuanced <clears throat> when it comes to uh, better managing blood glucose levels. So let's run through those two things. Mm -hmm. The first one is stress. Oh yeah. Now stress will not put fat on, on your you. body. Mm -mm. Okay, it's not like you get stressed and then all of a sudden fat goes on your body. As a matter of fact, some people get stressed and lose body fat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, part of it is the idea of uh, when you get stressed, your body needs extra energy. So what is it going to do? It's going to produce more cortisol and cortisol is a hormone that essentially uh, breaks down whatever glycogen or other substrates in your body to Good produce energy. more, yeah, to produce more glucose essentially in the bloodstream. So <clears throat> this is not good as an indirect thing uh, in terms of blood glucose. Blood glucose. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, when you go through stress, you tend to eat, not everybody, but more often than not, people tend to resort to wanting to eat more, more food. And generally it's not good food. And this is, this is where uh, I believe, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that out there because I don't actually, we don't actually know and I don't, I don't know if there's any data out there, I'm sure there is data out there to, to point this out. But this is where I believe where people say when they're under stress they gain weight. Because this is, it's a bit ridiculous to assume that, that there's no extra energy going in, there's no way that you're actually going to put, put on body fat just from being stressed. It's, it's the outcomes that come from being stressed, i.e. drink, eating and drinking. Yeah. Right. So. Mm. And what was the second point? Uh, second point here is sleep. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Now sleep, we know that with lack of sleep, there are heightened levels of uh, fasting uh, insulin levels, heightened levels of fasting uh, blood glucose levels. So we know those are just going to be sitting higher. Mm -hmm. Now, so that can ha that can play some role in perhaps just not managing food, uh, uh, like food that you currently eat, maybe not partitioning those those energy substrates quite as efficiently, optimally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that may have some role, okay, and that goes for stress as well. That goes for <laughs> stress as well. But we're talking about maybe if anything, if there is that difference, it can be very 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 small. Again, the biggest difference here, food, bigger window to eat or longer window, because you're not sleeping as much, yeah. and hunger cues are heightened. Absolutely. Okay, if you don't sleep enough, you're going to feel hungrier. So you've got a bigger window to eat, and you're going to feel hungrier. Chances are you're eating more, and this is why people tend to gain weight if they don't sleep enough. Okay, let's get to the message of the day. Um, you may believe that it takes a special kind of genetics or maybe a certain talent in order for you to lose fat, you know, there's only certain people who can lose fat, right, Martina? Obviously. Yeah, only certain people. Only sp like athletes special. or special kinds of people. No. So uh, we're going to spell this with five things that will help you to better lose fat or just in general, reach your goal in whatever you're working towards. So here they are. <clears throat> Following a system, organization, effort, just putting in the effort will make a big difference. <laughs> Imagine that. Being prepared. So this kind of goes along with organization, being both organized and prepared. In the case of this challenge, pre-planning your food. 
That's a huge difference. And believe it or not, a positive attitude. Yes, Martina, thinking about or thinking in terms of dieting in a positive light or whatever you're working towards in a positive light, this will make a big difference as opposed to being mm -hmm. negative about whatever journey you're on Indeed. or whatever goal you are after. Mm -hmm. right? So giving you more chances to succeed. Yeah. So again, five things that are going to basically, I think, will make or break, well, they will, they'll make or break you from either gaining or losing weight, following a system, being organized, putting in the effort, uh, being prepared well in advance, of course, and of course, a positive attitude. And on that note, positive energy, positive vibes, Believe in yourself and for the love of God, give some gratitude and we'll talk to you all very soon.